The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to uh, Keith in Philadelphia. Hey, Keith, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. You having a good day out there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, a couple things, Tom. Number one, I started listening to you in 2001 and never stopped. Yes, and uh, I owe you a lot, my family as well. And this is the first time I'm calling. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go two hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone had a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Surrender and let go of the past. Whatever life takes away from you, let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you allow yourself to be fully to be fully alive in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can ha enjoy the dream that is happening right here, right now. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials down 131, Nasdaq off 39, S and P's off 13, gold contract down 86 dollars, trading at 1,576 an ounce. Silver off two dollars and forty cents at twenty eight dollars and eighty six cents an ounce. Platinum down fifty three bucks at one thousand four twenty one an ounce. Copper down sixteen pennies at three twenty seven a pound. Late sweet crude down five dollars and thirty three cents at ninety four dollars and ninety two cents a barrel. That's a beautiful thing, no doubt. Bonds up a point and a half at one forty four fifteen. Dollar index up 27 ticks, trading out at 80.56. The euro was down 54 at 129.83. And the yen up 4 at 78.04. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You came down 13 points. You did 855 million. Now the 855, folks, is coming into the November 30th time frame of 1.6 billion. Uh, so bottom line, you haven't had a rejection in price. Uh, what you have, however, is that you got anemic volume on the way down, and that's saying that this baby is in a consolidation. And the top of that consolidation is that 1292 on the 27th of October. Uh, you know, we'll see whether it wants to hit the 1196, which is the low of the 30th. But uh, anemic volume on the way back down. That keeps it in a consolidation. We go to the Dow Industries. Let's like take a look at the Dow. Same setup on the Dow. Dow now buck 31. And Dow looks to me like, yeah, it's going to go try to test that uh, 27th once again. Because you can see it's coming down on anemic volume. The NASDAQ Composite. What we have with the Composite is this. Now, composite, this, is, this one's really interesting. The reason being is this. The composite had two separate gaps. You know, we had gap down on the composite November 18th. Uh, the top of that was the price point of 25.67. You gap down to uh, 25.39. Now, check this out. So 25.39 is the high, top of one gap. The top of the second gap on the way back up was 29.42. Well, we came into those today. We came into that with 1.7 billion versus uh, 1.6 and 2 billion. You know, so that those gaps did hold. I mean, it's going to get interesting here to see whether it can get down into those gaps further. For at this point, uh, that gap did hold. Now let's go over and we'll take a look at King Dollar. King Dollar. What did King Dollar do out here? Okay. She does 36,000 contracts. She gets up to a price point today of. 80.775. Uh, she closed out the day at 80.57. And what that is, that is over the highs of that were generated on the 4th. Uh, she blew away the 25th, which was that 79.87 price point. Now, what we did here, folks, is this. We've done 100% move for move. Um, when I actually go over to the UUP, it looks to me that we'll start building some more cars now. So, so watch what happened with the UUP. Now, the UUP is the, the power shares dollar index. The last high out there was 2262. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me, folks. We hit 2270 today. We closed at 2262. We did 4.5 million. Yesterday, what we did is 7 million. Well, both of those highs out there have more volume. We have 12 million and 9 million. So that's saying to me that the dollar move at this point is done on the way up, short term. It'll pull back slightly. It's going to build cars to do a larger ABC structure on the way up. Because, see, the way that the dollar, if I go back to the, now what I'm going to do is go back to the actual dollar contract, okay? And I'm going to put this on a continuous basis. Uh, what, the, what the dollar index has done is this. Huge conviction, has the volume behind the move, gets up and over the last high on the continuous contract, which is the seventh, pushes into the 81 area with volume. So watch how this shakes out, folks. Building cars here down at these lower levels before you actually hit 81.63 will put juice in this doll that will get it to 89. You know, that's the way that looks to me that this thing is setting up. See, because when we take out uh, even go after. Let's say first we got to go after the 8163. You take out that 8163, and I'm telling you, watch out, because that means the 89 is game, and from that point on, um, a lot more can be game than that. We go over to the gold contract. We take a look at gold. Why well, all commodities today absolutely got smoked. Uh, this gold contract, we came down to 1565. We're at 1577. Um, and the volume is way too high on the way down, folks. Uh, you know, we were waiting for this test down here at the 1543 uh, uh, area, but it looks to me like it's going to basically blow the thing away. Let's go to Mark in Colorado. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. So this is getting a little confusing for me because we've kind of been in a commodities market. It looks like the commodities are leading us down again. Um, and I was looking at uh, looking at playing the gold miners. Uh, on the way back up, if it if it if it uh, made this test down here, so I was going to play the Nugget N U G T off the G D X, but it looks like the G D X, just like the gold, like the G L D, came down with pretty good volume today. So I'm wondering if we I need to hold off on this. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah, you got the N U G T, which is the uh, direction 300% bull position in the gold miners, folks. Okay. Um, and, and what you have here, the, the bottom line is that we came down way too hard. Uh, if, if we if we go back over, first let's look at the GLD for a second. I'll, I'll get to the, the miners in a second, okay? What the GLD did, folks, is this. Now the GLD is 10% of the price of gold. You got to remember something. When we came, you know, if I go back to the highs of 185 in the GLD, you know, you came down, you came down hard, you hit a low, first. Low out there was 158 with 58 million shares. The low was established at 154 with 42 million shares. Well, when you come down that hard, you know, and then we had a big counter trend bounce, what shouldn't have happened is that volume shouldn't have blown out of the, out of the GLD again, and it did. And it's really hard for that to happen after you've had such a heavy acceleration on the way down. That's telling me that... <laughs> This is pretty sick, so watch this, folks. This gets sick, too. It's telling me that this now wants to get down to the 1420 area. And where I'm going with that is the May 5th week of 2011. That's, a, that's how this thing looks like it's going to shake out. And if that's the case, Mark, if we go over to the GDX, and we take a look at the GDX, you know, the GDX is at 5238, that has 30 million shares versus the 29 million at the 50. And this thing's going to get blown away. You know, so. Um, well, it never, it didn't, the swing was at 50.42. That's right. It got down to 51.53. So I guess the, I guess it potentially it could get under that and test it with lighter volume still, but you still want to be pretty careful because of the volume from today. That's right. It could. And, and it, it, okay, so what he just brought up, if in fact that's what it does, that'll be, that, that'll, the, mo the move will stop right there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah. you know, if, if folks, if, if the GDX, you know, you get the 5042, if the volume contracts, but it has to contract dramatically at that point, okay, then you're in good shape, man. 
You know, okay, the, yeah, and it looks like the weekly's got 97 million, and so far this week we've been 61. Well, yeah, let, let me, you know, there's, there's something that, that basically had given me a heads up a long time ago that there was trouble, you know, in these equities and in the gold in general. And it was an eco eagle. If you see this, folks, okay, if you had been to some of my workshops, I showed this thing over a year ago, but let, I'm going to show it to you around Tiger TV right now. It's, it's absolutely insane. An eco eagle hit a low today of $38, okay? The high is $83. But when you see this, this is like crazy. And this is what was sticking out like a sore thumb to me just in general in the gold market because I, I, it made no sense that this low, this high volume low was sticking out here. And sure enough, it was not only sticking out here, but now where the problem is is that we're actually into this low. So what you're looking at here, folks, is you're looking at a five-year, four-year chart on an Eco Eagle. An Eco Eagle... You know, in 2000, <coughs> excuse me, folks, 2009 was at 83 bucks. It went down to $20. Just, you know, that's when the market got destroyed. Well, the largest bar, it was $39.62 at the high and $20 at the low. Well, you know what? We just got into that today. That's telling me big problems. And see, what had happened is that Anika Eagle went back up to the $88, no volume there, you know, so there's, there's more trouble ahead here. That's the bottom line. Now, I, I think the way this wants to set up right now, Mark, though, is that it looks to me like the heaviest moves are over right now. You know, we'll see. You know, maybe, maybe it'll just flush the whole, the whole deal. Um, but I suspect that commodities will probably get some kind of a bounce first. Then we'll get, a, you know... Unless the dollar wants to go to 89 right now, and I don't see the dollar going to 89 right now. You know, the dollar looks to me like it wants to build some cars to get to higher price. Oh, here, yeah, I know what we can do. Let's go over to the bonds for a second. Because the bonds... Bonds are strong. Yeah, they did 343,000 contracts. Okay, so she's going into... She's going to have to do more than that, though. She's 450. But she, 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 she does want to uh, get into that 145 to 147, you know, so... The, the bottom line is that I, I wouldn't be going long those miners right now. Okay, thanks. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, high-volume stocks we had out here, even though there wasn't any high volume. These are the high volume in the context of uh, where the market was. We had Halliburton down 86 cents. Uh, Exxon was off a buck four. We had Microsoft down 17. Citigroup was off 85. We take a look at the... Um, let's go to the silver market. Uh, silver. So silver it was down a couple of bucks. S I H two. You stay right there, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. We'll come right back, folks.